So, I don't know how else to put this, but I'm awake, guys. I'm awake. And me saying this on YouTube has so many meanings and implications. But uh, I'm awake. And I'm glad I'm awake. And my motivation is different. Because, like, okay. So, um, as you guys know, I'm Christian. And I'm really, I'm fighting to, you know, really... Like, I'm, I'm fighting for, uh, for God, you know, like through worshiping, spreading the gospel is the best way I know how, denying self and things like that. It's, it, it, I'm doing that, you see? And the thing, what, and, and what, what it is, is that like, I love uh, information and sometimes that can be my downfall. Like, for instance, like I've been learning about the apostasy that's going on in my church, specifically, so to speak. And I'm like, oh man, this is like so crazy. This is, you know, and I'm getting involved with this. And I'm like, hold on. I know I can get so involved with this and lose focus as to why I'm doing this. Christ, God's love, you know? So I wanted to basically give like a quick uh, Bible study on this. Um, if you go to the the book of Genesis, chapter one, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it goes through the six literal days that God created the heavens and the earth and how he rested on the seventh. And I, I talk about this somewhat in my other videos, but what's beautiful about this is that uh, God created the world in six days. And what's crazy is that humans try to humanize God by saying that God created the world through evolution, which is a ridiculous idea because evolution, the idea of evolution, death is the hero. So things have to die in order for new things to come. But according to scripture, death didn't come in until man sinned. So it's not even consistent. It just doesn't make any sense. But my whole thing, the whole point I'm trying to make is how um, sin separates us from God. It makes us scared of God. And you can see that in chapter three of Genesis, when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, what they immediately did is they found that they were naked. And then they went and they found some fig leaves to put on their body and they uh, hid from God. Before that even happened, that wasn't even a thing. They never hid from God. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, Okay, I'm not even gonna edit that out. <laughs> they never hid from God. It was just like they were they were tight, you know. They they communed with Him, you know. They because they were they were in a in a good relationship with God until until they violated that relation. And as soon as they violated that relationship, that's when the fear came in, and that's when they they were like, you know, oh my goodness. And if you notice that when they sinned and knew that they were naked they immediately did what the flesh thought to do would fix things up was to put fig leaves, which after a while would just fit, you know, wither and die away and wrap themselves. And God was like, that's not good enough. What I need to do is make you something that's going to be good enough. So he made them tunics out of a slain animal. And by this, he showed them that because of what they did, something had to die to save them from shame. Wow, that's crazy. Something had to die to save them from shame and immediate death. It was an innocent animal that had to die to make tunics for them. And from then on, it's like, you can just see how evil is basically spoken about throughout the entire Bible and how the Bible essentially is a narrative of a God of love navigating his way through a world of evil. And it's like, that's a hard job. You know, you have so many people like that, that continuously go astray, you know, but, but God's love is, is, is amazing. And here's the thing that, I find amazing is that 
the love that God has for us is a Greek word that I like to use for God's love is agape, which is unconditional. Um, this love doesn't seek its own. And 1 Corinthians 13, it goes, in, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5, it goes and explains what, what love is. And in some versions, I know in the King James Version, uh, love is described as charity. It says charity is, charity is, charity is, charity is, charity is. But what the Bible also says is that God is love, 1 John 4, 8. This is the only verse in the Bible that tells you what God is, is that God is love. So when you read scripture, you should read it with that narrative in mind that God is love. And study it in that in sense of like, okay, how, like, how does love make sense in this story? Where is love in this story? You know, I mean, the ultimate love story is the cross. I mean, it's it's painful. You know, when you see Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, sweating, uh, blood. You know, I think they call that condition diabetes. You know, and he, and he's just like. He's he's literally just asking God, can this cup pass from me? And he just, and he knows that it's his lot, and he has to go through with it. And it's because of his incredible love that he continuously denied himself. He said, God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, people that were possessed with evil had no idea what they were doing. They were mocking and ridiculing him, and they realized that like this. This man is saving your life. What he's doing is to save the life of of you and and countless uh, people throughout the ages, you know. And and the enemy, the one who accuses day and night, <laughs> he's constantly, constantly trying to find a way to 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 keep us down with him you know to basically because uh, he knows he has nothing but a short time so he's trying to basically take as many people with him as as possible take as many people with him as possible so uh one thing that i did uh what i thought was interesting so you remember the verse it says uh accuses the brethren day or accuses uh the brethren day and night constantly accusing our brethren day and night all the time and now the story of Job makes sense. So, because uh, you remember when, when, when Satan or Lucifer or Satan went to and fro, he's like, where are you? And the sons of God's like, where are you going? He's like, oh, well, I'm going, you know, I've been to heaven and, uh, and earth and to and fro, blah, 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 this and that, the other. And, and I think God knew that he was going to be like, well, um, you know, you're, all, your, all, your, all these people are sinners, so you might as well just give them to me. And Jesus, and Jesus is like, no, <laughs> why don't you check out my servant, Job, man? You know, that guy, you know, he, he's, he's dedicated to me. And he's like, and he, he told him, he's like, oh, well, well, um, he's only dedicated to you because, uh, you know, um, um, because you give him all of his stuff and, and, and he's got health and wealth and children and, and this, that, and the other. And, and he's like, you know what? Go ahead and mess with him, but don't touch him. And you know he uh, he basically gets his gets kill, kills his children, destroys all his land. And I mean the the devil's doing all of this. And what's crazy is that the whole time, Job thinks that it's God, but even when he thinks it's God, he's still not even like upset he's like god taketh and he can he god giveth and he taketh away he's not even tripping he's like he's like i'm dedicated to you i'm dedicated to you. that's in that that's like christ type love you know and job in a sense was a type of christ because he is showing like his unconditional love for his creator which is what we should all do and there's, there's going to come a time, I'm telling you, where we're going to be tested. People that are that are truly living by the word, we're, we're going to be tested. And if you're faking it, it's going to figure you out. The time is going to come is where where each, every Christian is going to be squeezed out like a sponge. And when you're squeezed out, 
You don't want any of you to come out. You want Christ to, to come out of you. I mean, there are incredible stories about how people were tested and never broke. And it's all because of the power of Christ, the Holy Spirit. That's powerful. That's powerful. And what trips me out now is that I, I just realized that there's not, there's not really that many churches that are preaching that you can live a sinless life, which... It's consistent with scripture because it says, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. God came to save us from our sins, not to save us in sins. So it is possible. However, we we still are going to be tempted. There's nothing sinful about being tempted, but we can have victory over these sins as long as we submit. And that's the hardest part of submitting. Justification is easy. Sanctification is not. And uh, sanctification is not, but... It's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple because you have to constantly deny yourself, denying yourself. That's why, like I said before, things like the Sabbath is, is so beautiful because you're learning not to, not to focus on self. The doctrine of the Sabbath is, hey, I'm going to rest in God. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me and take my... Uh, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, you know, like, like that, that right there. That's, the, that's a beautiful promise, a beautiful gospel message, surrendering, you know, when you live in the spirit, you want to, you won't fulfill the deeds of the flesh. And, and the way it works, and I'm sure people have heard this analogy before, but the dog you feed the most is the dog that wins the fight. So you got two dogs in your soul. There's the one dog, the flesh dog, and then the, the spirit dog. If you keep feeding the flesh dog, he's going to beat the, 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 the spirit dog all the time. But when you start feed, feeding that spirit dog, he's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, it's gonna, and he's going to start defeating that flesh dog even easier. It's the only way I can describe it that that's going to make any sense. So the way you, you feed that flesh dog is by prayer devotion, Bible study. These are simple things and it's not about feeling. It even says in scripture, choose you today who you shall serve. I believe in Joshua. Um, Joshua 12, 24 or 24, 12. I might be totally wrong, but I, I believe it's in Joshua. It never says feel. It says, choose you today whom you will serve. The feelings will come and go because the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So, so choose you today who you serve, you know, and, and, and don't, don't buy into things because they're convenient, because that's not the way Christianity works, not the way God works. The cross was not convenient. Christ says, you know, pick up a cross and follow me. There's going to be a lot of inconvenient things you're going to have to do, man. <laughs> you know, like. Like preaching the gospel is not a convenient thing. It's scary, especially if an introvert, and and you you and you trying to stand for something, and and somebody wants to get in an argument with you, and you're just like, uh, uh, like you got to rely on the Holy Spirit, man. And and we're not here to argue with people. We're just here to present the truth. Be like, hey, Jesus died on the cross for you. Do you accept this gift? And if they do, then it's your job to disciple them, teach them how to do what you're doing. Teach them how to go out and spread the gospel and they'll take whatever gifts they got from the Holy Spirit or, or you know, and, and spread the gospel the best way they know how, you know. So I wanted to share that with you and uh, and I hope that uh, it was good, practical. And, um, you know, I'm I'm one that I like to give like deep messages, but sometimes it's like, you know, it, it, it's, it doesn't need to be all of that. And I, I feel that that. Uh, that um, I can just give what people are looking for, you know? And so uh, I'm going to continue posting um, little Bible studies here and there and music. And uh, if you like, subscribe, comment, share. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you think about the music I'll be making. And uh, yeah, uh, love you. Deuces.